What are modal auxiliary verbs? I just got a phone call from a friend. He said that he may come and visit me this weekend. So, does that mean that my friend is definitely coming to visit? Unfortunately, no. The word may tells me that his visit is only a possibility. Did you know that the word may is actually a type of verb? It's not an action verb like run, dance, or think. It is a special kind of helping verb. Remember, helping verbs help to give main verbs more meaning. The helping verb may gets to have a very fancy title. Words like may are called modal auxiliary verbs. We will just call them modal verbs for short. Here is how they are used. We can make our written and spoken messages clearer and easier to understand in many ways. One way is to use modal verbs. Modal verbs are used with main verbs to show different times, moods, or conditions. They are the helping verbs can, could, will, would, should, may, might, must, ought, and shall. Modal verbs have no meaning on their own. They work with main verbs to help express a meaning. Modal verbs have a few rules that they have to follow. First, to form the negative, just add the word not after the modal verb. The sentence, you should not run in the hallway, is an example of how we form the negative of a modal verb. Next, to form a question using modal verbs, you put the verb before the subject. The question, could you take me to the airport, is an example of this rule. Another rule for modal verbs is that they never change form. This means that you can never add an S or ED ending to these verbs. Lastly, modal verbs are never followed by the word to. The only exception to this is the modal verb ought, which becomes ought to. Let's take a closer look at how modal verbs are used. One way is that they can say that something was possible but did not actually happen. Let's say you and I were walking in the rain, but you did not share your umbrella with me. I would say, you could have shared your umbrella with me, or you should have shared your umbrella with me. Modal verbs like could and should are used to talk about possibilities in the past, present, and future. Let's review what we have just learned about modal auxiliary verbs. Question one. What are modal verbs used to express? A, different times. B, different moods. C, different conditions. D, all of the above. If you answered D, you know that modal verbs express different moods, times, and conditions. Question two. Modal auxiliary verbs are what type of verbs? A, linking verbs. B, action verbs, C, helping verbs, D, irregular verbs. The correct answer is C. Modal auxiliary verbs are helping verbs. Question three. Which modal verb is the only one that can be followed by the word to? A, ought, B, can, C, should, D, will. The correct answer is A. Ought is the only modal verb that can be followed by the word to. Modal verbs may and might. Let's take a look at some of the modal verbs. The verbs may and might are used when we are talking about the future, but we are uncertain or unsure about what is going to happen. In the sentence, my favorite team might win the Super Bowl, the modal verb might expresses a little bit of doubt about the outcome of the big game. May and might can be used to talk about the present with uncertainty. Here's an example. I may go shopping now. May and might can also be used to talk about the past with uncertainty. In the sentence, I am surprised he lost the race. He might have been injured. The action took place in the past. 
In very formal situations, the words may and might can also be used for talking about permission. This question is an example. May I sit here? The modal verb may can also be used when talking or writing about things that can happen in certain situations or things that can happen if something else happens. This sentence is an example. The branch might break if you climb on it. The negative of may is may not. It is used like this. There is a chance that I may not go to the mall on Saturday. The verb might is sometimes used to express something that was possible but did not actually happen. If you had seen me standing in the rain, you might have offered me an umbrella. The negative of might is might not. If you left through the side door, you might not have seen me standing in the rain. The modal verb must expresses certainty. Remember Cinderella? She was told you must leave the dance by midnight. Let's review what we have just learned about the modal verbs. Question one. Which of the following is an example of the modal verb may used to ask permission? A. The month of May is my favorite because of its warm weather. B. She may come with us if she finishes her homework. C. May I visit Grandma on Saturday? D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. May I visit Grandma on Saturday? Is an example of a permission question. Question two. Which of the following is an example of the word may used to show uncertainty? A. Our football team may win the championship. B. You may have some candy. C. She may not jump on the trampoline. D. None of the above. If you answered A, you know that our football team may win the championship shows uncertainty. Question three. Which of the following is an example of the word might used to express something that was possible but did not happen? A. Alex might win the grand prize. B. You might get sunburned if you don't use sunscreen. C. Louisa might go to Disneyland next summer. D. If I had known it was going to snow, I might have packed an extra sweater. The correct answer is D. If I had known it was going to snow, I might have packed an extra sweater. Shows that something was possible, but did not actually happen. Modal verbs can and could. Our next two modal verbs, can and could, are used in a variety of ways. They express ability, willingness, permission, and possibility. In the sentence, I can play the piano, can is used to express ability. Playing the piano is something I can do. Let's look at the sentence, can you give me a ride to school tomorrow? In this sentence, the modal verb can is used to express the idea of willingness. In other words, you are making a request to find out if someone is willing to do something for you. Sometimes, the modal verb can is used to express the idea of permission. Here is an example. Can I borrow a pen? Can is also used to show possibility. Just look at this sentence. You can stay after school to get extra help. This sentence tells you that the possibility of extra help exists if you stay after school. But how do we know whether we should use can or could in a sentence? This is a bit tricky, but the modal verb could functions in these three ways. First, it replaces can and gives the sentence a more doubtful or questioning tone. The sentence, could you help me, is an example. Could is also used as the past tense of the verb can. I could have eaten all of the cake last night. Lastly, could suggests that something is a possibility, much like the words might or may. This possibility exists in the past, present, or future. Here's an example sentence showing a present possibility. We could ride the roller coaster if we buy tickets. 
Here is the modal verb could used to show past possibility. If I had known that it was going to rain, I could have brought my umbrella. The negative of could is could not, or the contraction couldn't. If you didn't give me the key, I couldn't very well open the door. Let's review what we have learned about the modal verbs can and could. Question one, what are the modal verbs can and could use to express? A, ability. B, willingness. C, permission. D, all of the above. The correct answer is D. Can and could are used to express ability, willingness, and permission. Question two. What does can express in the sentence, I can run two miles? A, ability. B, possibility. C, permission. D, none of the above. If you answered A, you know that can expresses ability in that sentence. Question three. Which of the following expresses the negative for could? A, could not. B, couldn't. C, A and B. D, none of the above. The correct answer is C. Could not and couldn't are the negatives for could. Modal verbs will and would. Let's take a look at our last group of modal verbs. Will, would, ought, and shall. Will and would are sometimes used to express a future action. I will run for class president. They can also be used to express the past, present, or future with certainty. This means that you are sure that it did happen, can happen, or will happen. If I say, you will have arrived home by then, I am expressing certainty that your arrival home by a certain time will happen. The negative of will is will not or won't. The modal verb would is used to show what would happen if something else happened. Let's look at this sentence. The coach would give you batting tips if you ask her. Would can also be used to express polite requests and offers. Would you like another glass of lemonade? Shall and should are also modal verbs. Shall is usually used to show a future action. We shall enjoy sunny days this summer. The modal verb should is used to express a hope or to give advice. It should be a great concert. In that sentence, I am expressing my hope that the concert will be great. Here is an example of how should is used to offer advice. I think you should try the chocolate cake. The modal verb ought is the only modal verb that can use the word to after it. Usually, ought has the same meaning as the verb should. If I say, you ought to wear a red sweater, I could also say, you should wear a red sweater. Both versions of the sentence express the same basic idea. Are you ready for the modal auxiliary verb challenge? Question one. How is the modal verb should used in this sentence? I think you should wear the red sweatshirt. A, to express doubt. B, to give advice. C, to express a request. D, to express certainty. If you answered B, you know that in this case, should was used to give advice. Question two. How is the modal verb would used in this sentence. Would you like a ride to practice? A, to express certainty in the future. B, to express doubt. C, to express a polite offer. D, none of the above. If you answered C, you know that in this case, the modal verb would expresses a polite offer. Question three. How is shall used in this sentence? We shall take the 10 o'clock train to the city. A, to show a past action. B, to show a future action. C, to express willingness. D, to express doubt. 
The correct answer is B. It is used to show a future action. Thinking question. How do modal verbs help us communicate more clearly each day?